call to order the Town of Andover Board of Selectmen regular meeting for Monday, December 12th at 7 p.m. with our first order of business, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it's formed, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will get started with public speak. We'll start with uh, Kimberly Hawes. Hi, I am here as a representative from the Rec Commission. We're, um, I'm just here to go over the cool memorandum of agreement when that comes up on the agenda. Okay, and Amy, I'm assuming we'll wait for cool or would you like to say something? Yeah, no, no, we can wait for cool. Thank you. And Creme? Just here listening, thank you. And then we have CVC and we have Department of Public Works. So I think that's everybody. Is there anyone else that would like to sit there and participate in public speak when I'm missing? Okay, so we'll move on to item three, additions and deletions to the agenda. Um, I have one deletion to the agenda, item five, executive session, the union grievance. Uh, don't ask me, the union is, um, the union and uh, Eric have agreed to put that off. Okay. And then uh, I would sit there and say, let's move uh, the truck up so we can get uh, where was that item uh that was 11 ai 11 ai so let's move that up so jay can go first all right anybody else paul you good okay scott you good 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 Somebody second that, let's vote. Second. Aye. second. All right, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. So we're gonna start with 11A-I, discussion of the Freightliner of Hartford New Plow. Jay, you're up. You're muted, Jay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so good evening. Um, I was able to get the uh, quote updated uh, for the uh, plow truck for this year. Uh, I'm assuming you got everything in your packet for the freight liner. And did you have a, it's the same, same truck that was quoted uh, last year. And I don't know if you have any questions on that. The, uh, you know, it's basically this, you know, just uh, uh, updated in pricing. Uh, everything remains the same. Uh, the one thing that uh, I didn't have at the time when I got this quotation uh was the uh, municipal lease payments um options for a four year or five year and what were they jay the lease payments uh for a four year payment it's uh or uh seventy one thousand seven seventy two forty six five year uh lease payments fifty eight 888.95. And those prices are valid till uh, January 5th. And then they would have to be updated. Um, you know, again, in case there's any adjustments to interest rates and whatnot. Okay. <clears throat> 
Eric, are, are we, um, do we have this in our budget? Yeah, you're on mute. You're on mute, Eric. Okay, I'll start again. So what we have in the budget is we have a public works equipment fund. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have enough money and we won't in next year's budget to outright purchase this. And the reality is even if we agree to a contract now, we're not gonna have it until the next budget cycle. The objective with uh, telling them we're gonna buy it now is that we stand a good chance of having it for next fall's plow season, which is the objective. Because we're not gonna have enough money in the public works equipment fund to fund the outright purchase because it's around $260,000. My suggestion is that we pursue a, uh, you know, our lease options for that piece of equipment. Okay. What's the payout at the end of it? There should be no payout. It shouldn't, there is, it's not listed with any payout. It's just five, five, well, depending on what you choose. It's uh, those payments uh, are equal equal cool payments oh but basically it's uh thirty thousand dollars of interest in the four-year note and probably about forty thousand dollars of interest in the five-year um, yeah i didn't add them up yeah what i do what they did to uh tell me that uh if the contract uh was agreeable and all parties signed the first pay <coughs> excuse me the first payment would be due uh, uh at the time of signing the contract and held in escrow um till delivery of the truck so currently currently there are build slots right now available um he said he, he currently he's got 12 build slots for next year, which it's the fall, you know, if we were able to act on this soon, um, we could see a truck uh, b before winter. Okay, and it's gonna be a silly question, Jay, but you're gonna tell me you need the truck, right? Well, that's the plan, yeah. I mean, we have we have two trucks that we we uh, fixed up this year, um, and you know one of them will become the spare. The other truck, uh, you know, we'll send down the road. Okay. And when is the date that you need an answer by to get on this contract? To get on this contract within the there, next couple. There is a deadline on the quote. Oh, this uh, Jan uh, for the January fifth for this quote, which I I doubt will happen between now and you know the the end of the month. So, and typically between now and you know the next couple of months, he he's seen that prices doesn't you know as far as interest rates they don't really change that much, so it may not have much effect on the bottom line. As right. far as the lease goes. Well, we should put this on the top of our agenda for the next meeting. And so Eric and Adrian and Jeff can all weigh in on the financial ramifications of what we're doing. So what I would do is go back to the Freightliner gentleman and say, hey, listen, the Board of Selectmen would like to go past their next meeting with this quote. Unless it goes down, of course, and then I want to take advantage of it going down, which it won't go down. Yeah. The only... the. Uh... Uh, my question for the board, um, you know, this this is a state bid price, um, uh, and we went through the uh, looking for trucks last year. Do we have to go through uh, that process all over again, seeing that this truck meets the qualifications as far as purchasing, or is that for 
um, finance CIP. Do we got to, because I believe I got on their schedule as well. Well, we'll let them tell you what they want done. I mean, I'm assuming we have to follow certain parameters within this new uh, purchasing policy. And the question that I would ask is just come prepared with the information from last year. What were your numbers? Are they higher? Is it much higher, this, this quote from the state, than what you were getting last year? Uh, this one's, the new quote is just under the second bid from last year. Although. What was the first bid? It's high, it's higher than the bid we had last year for the one, you know, for the freight liner. It's about uh, last year's price was 240 uh, for the truck. And this year for freight liner, we're at oh, 259. Where we were at. Many papers. Yeah, 259. All right. So it's about $20,000 difference so unless the other members of the board want to sit there and push this forward here we can push this off to our next meeting i think it would be wise to wait till next meeting i think there's going to be maybe some questions or just to give the other two members time to look everything over okay okay all right jay do you have anything else you want to share with us no that's it for tonight all right. Jay, thank you very much. That's good, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you thank you. So we're going to move to item four, the treasurer's report. Four A is the audit finding corrective action plan. So that wasn't meant to be in the packet. Sorry, that was my bad proofing of the packet before it went out. Um, you've already seen that, so it's in there, but. I don't think we really need to discuss it. Um, and I don't have the sets of summaries um, to provide you. Um, the only thing I would really like to talk about in that group is the, the uh, item B6, uh, which is the chart of account display options, um, which I did put in the packet. And so one of the things that had come out of the last, uh, so we know we, we're going to QuickBooks and the question is what is, what is the data you're gonna get every month look like? Um, and this is what the treasurer has suggested we provide, you know, essentially just a profit and loss statement, um, which shows the details you know, for both revenue and expense. And there's not a lot of detail there um, there will be by the next time you see this. Um, and then the other question is, how do we actually organize the data to present it both to the board and to the public? And this is my best guess or thoughts as to how it should be presented overall. Um, so I wanted to put it in the packet so you guys had a... a, a a chance to look at it. I reordered some things. The actual numbering scheme comes from uniform chart of accounts. So most of the numbering isn't going to change, but how it looks could change. And so I have suggested this and we rearranged and grouped some things. So everything is there. It just, it doesn't look like it did before. So I want to make sure you guys are all okay with it and the board of finance is okay with it before we lock that in as our final you know how we're going to present it i have no problem with it but you have to realize eric that it's extremely easy to present the data in quickbooks in multiple formats in any different way you want it. Um, the only thing that i would tell you that i would want on a monthly basis is a check register so I would like this information plus a check register provided to us so that we can sit there and if we're not signing checks, we can actually see what disbursements the town has made. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, Eric, it looks great. Okay. 
that's how it will be presented to you in the future. There's a lot of information that's not, I mean, obviously it doesn't, you know, we haven't put deposits in. There's a lot of things that haven't been put in yet. So, um, and I'm assuming what the treasurer has done is done journal entries to sit there and post all this. Uh, that's what she's in the process of doing right now. Okay. Okay. And then uh, for next month, can you give us a report of what the status of the bank reconciliation are? Sure. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful. And hopefully you got it all done. It's all up on QuickBooks and everything's right. So we're getting there. Looks good. Anybody got any questions? Nope. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to, um, well, we're skipping to item five because item five has been deleted. So item six, board and commission presentations. Eric, do we have any? Uh, we do not, as far as I know. Okay, excellent. Item seven, appointments. Do we have any? We don't have any appointments. Okay, item eight, resignations. No resignations. Okay. Uh, item nine, town administration. So I don't have a formal administrator's report. The What I wanted to spend my time going over is what I told you I would do at the last meeting, which is present a budget overview just of the things that are likely to have a significant impact on the budget coming up. Um, and I don't wanna do that right now. If you have any specific questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them, but I don't have a formal report for you. Okay, anybody got any specific questions they wanna ask Eric today? Even nope. though Eric hasn't been feeling well today and his stomach bothers me. So. <laughs> anybody? No, nope. we're good. Okay, um, item 10, old business. Um, finance department employment, status of the finance official, Eric? So we still don't, I left that on there as a placeholder, <laughs> but you as a board had asked me to hold off and advertise basically uh, right after the holidays. So that's still my intention. Okay. Um, and Eric, next month when we do this, um, take the old business, right? And take the A away from discuss and act upon the following. Just do that for me, little side note. All right, so we're going to see the uh, status of the community center RFP. Uh, so we're fairly far along. We've, uh, the committee that you, the committee that you appointed has sat down and met and reviewed all of the uh, submissions that we had. We had five uh, total submissions. Um, and we have a meeting scheduled, I think on the 19th to bring the contractors back in, um, at which point the goal would be to announce uh, who our preferred bidder is and then have a start contract negotiations so that we come back to the board of selectmen to approve a contract for it, uh, a design build contract um, potentially in January. That's Adrian's the committee chair and that's what he was looking to do. All right, can I ask one question? Um, for all the participants on this call, can you mute yourselves, everybody? There's some feedback coming from one one computer or phone. All right, so Brian, if you're listening, can you mute yourself? Thank you. I muted him okay. for you. Now we, oh, you got it? Okay. Yep. Um, so do you need us to sit there and uh, make a motion at this meeting to give you permission to start contract negotiations? I know we, we have to get the contract back and approve it, but do you need anything from us? Well, I, I think if you're going to empower the commission to make that choice and bring you back a contract to sign, then you'd have to make a motion allowing them to do that or allowing me to do that for that matter. Well, I don't think uh, 
when you say a contract is signed, I mean, the board of selectmen has to approve whatever final contract is out there. But Correct. I'm just asking you in the interim state, do you need anything from us? Well, I, I think if you want to, so I was originally assuming that the board of selectmen themselves would want to take a recommendation from the commission and then formally uh, pick the bidder and then go into contract negotiations. Uh, oh. But that will take an extra month if we do it that way, as yeah. opposed to you authorizing the committee to make that decision and then bring it back to the board at the approve a contract stage. It kind of depends on what the board overall is comfortable with. Um, my, my recommendation is we move this along quicker and we allow the commission pick somebody that they would like to sit there and start contract negotiations with, start contract negotiations with, and come back at the next meeting with a contract that they want us to review and approve. Aren't there, there's two of our board members on that committee already, I think, correct? Correct. So I, I would feel comfortable with having the committee decide, and like Jeff said, come back and, and uh, give us an update. Well, come back and give us a contract that, that they mm -hmm. believe they've negotiated in appropriate fashion. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I make a motion that we allow the, um, the Community Center Commission to um, go through the bid process, pick uh, the contractor that has the appropriate bid and to start contract negotiations. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So if it gets to the point, Eric, where you have a low bidder or a bidder that you guys, or a contract you believe is qualified, negotiate the contract and then bring it back to us and we'll talk about it at our next meeting and approve it. Okay. Okay. Um, 10D, the Hop River Homes update. I don't have an update for you at this point. I know that's something we got to get back on the burner. Oh, it's going to be January. Uh, 10E, uh, recognizing Andover residents. Paula? So maybe, <laughs> I hate to push it off, but I wanted to get everybody's thoughts and, and, and ideas on this program again. We were talking about um, the criteria, how to, how to have people nominate other individuals and and then how we were going to decide. I, I think we were all on the same page with how we were deciding we were going to go into, into an executive session and vote about it. But do we, do we feel comfortable talking about this and setting the standards or do we want to talk about this next month again? Uh, let, let's talk about it offline and then we can all sit there and, you know, I mean, because we, uh, even though we're a public board, this is one of those things I don't think we, we can do in public. So we have to figure it out. So maybe when the town attorney returns from Hawaii, uh, we can sit there and get some advice from him. Good right. idea. Yep. Don't want to drag it out. No, let's just yeah. do it. I'm trying to do something nice for the community and uh, we'll figure out how to do it correctly. All right, so uh, 10F, a cool program contract. I know we all have the contract in our packages. So um, I see that we have some cool members. So Jessica, how are you? I know that Amy is here. So um, I think what we'll, what we'll probably first do is, is Jessica, if you can, uh, just for the benefit of everybody, just walk us through the cool program uh, quickly and, and what you guys do. And then we'll talk about your contract and what you can talk to us about what issues you might have with the contract. So. Sure. So um, Amy and I feel that the cool program before it's a before and after school program. It's separate from the summer camp. Um, so we run that. We have two classrooms in the school and we run that out of there. Um, and then the summer camp we started a couple of years ago and we had partnered with the parks and rec department um, for the purpose of licensing and insurance. 
the first year that we ran the summer camp, we held our own insurance um, and then COVID happened. And then last year um, with the parks and recs department, they said that we didn't have to have insurance. That's why we didn't. However, we have insurance policy now, which covers us 12 um, months out of the year. Our insurance policy was um, due December 1st. That's why it took so long to get a policy that covered the whole year. I outsourced with another insurance agent, but they wouldn't look at our policy. Our current policy um, agent wouldn't shop around until we were due. So initially it was gonna go up $3,500 just to add the summer camp program. However, we um, were able to secure a policy that I emailed Eric Anderson on Friday and it has the coverage that you guys request. Okay. Right. So our question is why all of a sudden do we need a contract with the town? We've gone to um, we've gone to the board of ed. We've gone to um, town meetings when we were starting this program, and there was um, not an interest from the board of selectmen initially. So just wondering why all of a sudden there is a need for a contract. Well, you have to sit there and, and look at this board as a board that's trying to improve everything that's gone on mm -hmm. in the past. And uh, we really do need that contract to sit there and tie up all the loose ends and all the things that haven't been done correctly in the past. Because well, cool, you really should have had a contract for all of these years. We... School is run out of the school, and we we talk and we have the support of Val, and we have the support of the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. So the cool program, I don't understand. It's run out of classrooms in the school. So what does the Board of Selectmen have to do with classrooms inside of the school? Well, you're not wrong, but when you're utilizing the the uh, rec commission and some of the things that you're that you're using. We, not for cool, not for cool. We don't use recognition at all for cool. Okay. So when when we are sitting there looking at this and then the advice of the town attorney and what we're trying to do is just make sure that we're taking care of everything from a board of selectmen standpoint that we possibly can to protect the school, not the school, but the town and, and what we're dealing with. So, uh, so well, initially our problem with the contract is Pool is mentioned several times in the contract. Well, who's, you know, who's, the, who's the entity? Who's the insurance in? Our insurance mm -hmm. is, I gave Eric a copy. It's, um, well, what's the entity name? What do you mean? Like, who is the policy carried under? It is cool. community organized and operated pool. That's why we would name pool. Right. But I think what, what Jess is saying is that we basically rent a space from the school. So if we if rent a space from the school. school program. Ladies, if you would like the first section of the contract to taken out, we can talk to the town attorney on that. The second part of the contract, which is where all of the, the insurance is required, is under the second part of this. So you tell us, if you'd like that done, I'll sit there and I'll send it back to the town attorney. Well, when you make, when you said at a board of selectmen meeting back in the spring saying that you have talked to Amy and you've talked to the board and that basically you think that the town should run the program and Thank maybe you. you've talked to us in 2017 and then we have a contract in front of us that says basically that you guys can if we do not if we do not fulfill its obligations under this yeah. agreement or the best interests of the town, you guys can stop our program within seven calendar days. I, I, this program I, is I would sit there, for I would working sit there parents as like myself. Yeah. This program is for working parents as myself. Amy and I have took this program. We've created the summer camp. And we've done very good things with it. As of right now, we do not need the Parks and Recs um, help at all. We have secured our own insurance policy. We've been partnering with Val, our superintendent, and getting summer grants for our summer camp program. So at this point, we don't need any help from the Parks and Recs Department. We totally appreciate them helping us initially starting the summer camp program for the working families of Andover. 
so their kids have a fun and safe place to go to. But moving forward, if you need us to sign a contract to rent the space um, for the summer camp program, which would be the gym, which the Board of Selectmen or the town has ownership of, um, we will be happy to do that. But as far as signing a contract for cool, if there's any contract that should be signed, it should be with us and the Board of Ed, not with the town. So Jessica, just so you understand, my family took advantage of the cool program before you guys were even there. So I totally respect what the cool program is about and what it's doing. If you understood when I talked to you about why I thought the town should have it is because the town could sit there and have an employee such as Amy, which I talked about, involved in the rec commission and, and doing other things for the community. That is what I spoke to everybody about. That's what I still believe. But I understand the problems of trying to run that within the town. And that is why we're sitting there working with you guys in the way you're doing. You guys are doing a great job. Please do not take it the wrong way and don't even think about it. I'm not sitting here questioning what you guys are doing. What I believe, and I do believe this, is that if you look at most other communities around they're, all their after-school programs are run by the town or by the Board of Education, and the individuals that are part of that are working with the town and other areas. So that's my, that's my personal belief. I'm not here to sit there and say that that's happening. We don't have the resources or the time to dedicate toward it. So what you guys are doing, what Amy and you are doing, greatly appreciate. So don't take it the wrong way. Look at it we from a try to keep things minimal and we try and keep it affordable for the parents of our town. You know, possibly if you start having it run by the town, then the fees go up because now you're worrying about paying someone's insurance policy, you're worrying about paying salaries, where we intentionally work at bare minimum and keep it affordable for our families. <clears throat> Isn't so so I'm a I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. So Jess. Jessica, yeah. the the cool program is a nonprofit, right? You have a board, correct? Yes. So I, how I don't and Jeff, maybe this is a question that you can answer too. But we we're not looking to take over the cool program. I don't even know how we could, right? Because you guys have a board and it's a nonprofit, so it's not like we can go in and buy it out or anything like that. So I don't. I don't see where that could happen. Um, it would have to be, you know, conversations that would happen over time. Um, and in the contract, so did Dennis put in the contract? And forgive me because I, this was updated on Friday, and I'm just looking at this now. So where it it's says it's that in we're the contract. Where it, says, where it says if it's if we're in failure, if cool is in failure of, um, you know, this agreement the town can shut it down. It, it's, we're just talking, that's just talking about the summer program and then having cool be a part of. No, the, it's for both, Paula. It's for both. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, so it says it separately. I'll, I'll sit either. there, I'll sit there and I'll tell you, I read this this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Yeah, I, I don't understand. So, so I, I'm not, I'm just here. I wasn't going to approve this contract today at all. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm having a hard time. I have to understand what this board is seeing. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's a, those are certain things. That's why I asked you, what do you have problems with the contract? Okay. So I, that's why I was confused. I, I wasn't understanding how we could say that we can have that language in there. If, um, if why, would we ever, why would we ever do that? The only, the only time that anything would ever happen is if you had a catastrophe, that would be the only time that anything like that would ever be executed, but it's still something that you know anyway just tell I, i'm gonna we, we don't even have to have this in public please communicate with eric let's sit there and get changes made to this and if the changes need to be made and if you don't believe and and you know it's a question for me do we have any authority over the regular after school care program probably not so it shouldn't even be in the contract anyway mm -hmm. that's fine listen okay. This board is reasonable. We're not here to cause tremendous problems. I mean, I'll still have the discussion with you, Jessica and Amy. I'll still have the discussion with you as to what the 
the after school program would be better served within under a community umbrella. There's no doubt about it. I mean, cool, cool has been active in some form <laughs> since you know well before my years. children more well than my children were here so mm -hmm. you know in some form and, and you know is that the right way that's questionable but it's worked and it's done really good things for the town so make your recommendations on the contract let's get them in place and let's move forward because again as i said we do not have the resources to do it it's not something that I see happening in the near future. So we're gonna rely on your organization to sit there and continue to do it. So, so far moving forward, if we could have this conversation about the passenger van, um, do you, does the town of Andover still have the 16 passenger van? Eric? Yes. So Eric, in your email to me, you had written that um, if Amy got her CDL, she could potentially drive the 20 passenger van because is there gonna be a problem with, in the past we've used a town driver, but is there going to be a problem because they might not have a background check driving the kids to and from the link, lake? So, so believe you, the 16 passenger van, you just need an endorsement. You don't need a CDL. So if we could use that, that could solve the problem of the um, town driver not having the background check. I'm not trying to tell you what the legalities are resolving with the cool program driving. I mean, if you want the 20 passenger van, that definitely requires a CDL. Um, what the requirements are for the 16 for driving kids, because it's not directly school related. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, Just a public you know, passenger endorsement. I, I mean, you know, I, I keep, I heard that, you know, several people tell me that and then for other things. And then when I actually re, re, looked into it, I realized we had been operating illegally for a long time. Um, what I'm saying is I don't want that liability. I want to ensure that whoever's driving the kids, if it's a town vehicle, you know, is legal to drive them in that situation. And for me, the cleanest way to do it is to make sure if you have somebody with the CDL with their passenger endorsement, um, you know you're covered. Um, so that, that's my perspective. That's the cleanest way to do it. And I don't necessarily want to use town personnel to do it. And the reason is I flat out don't have enough drivers to do that and meet the needs of senior transportation. I mean, we still technically only have two drivers. One of them's sick right now. So we're already scaling back for a couple of weeks. So what so we're doing makes, internally. So, so Eric, that makes a lot of sense. Jessica, let's find mm -hmm. out about a 16 passenger van. Okay. If it's acceptable, Eric can, we can all come back on a decision to make, if it works, then he can drive the van. Okay. We can sit there and not have an insurance issue with our insurance coverage and, and our, our insurer, then fine. So let's find out the, the rules and what's required and let's try to see if we can do that. All right, our current now, policy um, covers the kids and drive. They they know that the kids are be driven places. So I know. So for our primary policy, it will cover that. Correct. Your policy would cover it, and then our policy would end up covering it because it would be our vehicle. So let's make sure that we're legally driving the vehicles correctly. So if okay. it's a certain type of of licensing, then let's get the licensing done now. So in the summer, you guys can deal with that and reduce your costs even further and have an individual take them back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Anything else related to the cool program that we need to talk about? Scott, Paula, anything? Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank right. you, ladies. All right. Uh, Eric, a 10 a G, the zoning changes to the town property on school road. So I'm just giving you the heads up that we, the Board of Selectmen or the Correction Planning and Zoning Commission does have a public hearing uh, coming up, which I believe is January 19th. And hopefully they will approve at that public hearing the 
zone change um, that will enable a community center to be built on the, the town's property. Okay, um, just as a secondary thing, the, um, the survey. Uh, the survey, I have not checked in with them in the last couple of days. At the beginning of last week, the surveyor was in doing the legal research in the town's records, um, and they had, you know, preliminarily walked the property. They had been planning on starting, I think, last Friday. Um, so hopefully they're out there surveying now. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions related to that item? Okay. Nope. Uh, item 11, new business. Item I, the Freightliner of Hartford, the new plow. We had that discussion. Uh, 2023 meeting schedule. So um, you have uh, to select meeting dates for the upcoming year. Um, my suggestion is to go with the uh, essentially the same ones you picked this year. Um, but, you know, now's the time when the board decides when it wants its schedule for next year's meetings. The one, the dates in question are always the Mondays with holidays, right? So, so the, July, July 10th is, is the second Monday. So that, that should work. And you get July, August 14th, September 11th. Uh, I don't believe that's the holiday. So holiday is the third, the fourth. The holiday is the fourth. So that's good. The ninth, the 13th. When is election day? The seventh or the second Tuesday? When is election day, Eric? 2020. You got me. Right. You're talking about November? Election day? Yeah. Um, yeah. It is Third. it's November 7th. 2023. So that's a Tuesday. <clears throat> okay, so we can still do the 13th. The, um, did, you talk, did you talk about October 9th? Is, you already talked about October 9th. Is there a, there a, a problem with October 9th? That's uh, Columbus Day. Okay, so that's our one problem day. So when do you want to do it on the 10th? I think we usually, I think for that month, we usually bump it to Tuesday. Or we could do the following Monday. I don't know if you want to push it off a week or a day. Just push it off a day. So that, that appears to be the only problem month is October then. Looks, yep, that's the only one. Okay. So, Eric, if you can go with the second Monday in every month except October, we'll have a meeting on October 10th of 2023. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Move on to. Um, Item 11, uh, triple I, opioid settlement allocation to towns, 820 some odd dollars. Eric, do we need to talk about it or what do we have to sign to get our allocation? So we have our allocation, we have the money. It's yeah. sitting in our bank account. The problem is, is that we have a hard time spending it uh, because it comes with a lot of strings attached. So I put in a memo, we at first asked, you know, all the towns had asked the health board to come back to us with recommendations of what the most logical and effective way to spend that money. Um, you know, so that was, that's starting on page around 47 of your packet. That's the memo from Rob Miller that talks about, you know, kind of what the, the, uh, the possibilities are. Um, in our case, I think we're probably, I mean, going to look at something like either just a straight donation to a treatment center, like community health resources, potentially, or seeing whether 
uh, we could talk AHM into running some kind of program and donating the money to them. Um, frankly, it's, it's not a lot of money and it's too complicated to try to figure out how to spend the money ourselves on our own harm reduction program. So Let's the best thing we can... Yep. Find, I mean, I, that, all I had in my head was, does AHM have any program that could qualify um, and donate the money to them? It's 800 and... 55. It's a huge, yep. huge number, 856. Let's round up, Scott. So 856. So let's find somebody to donate it to. Is, it, is that times two, Eric? No. Uh, no, I think we only have one... Uh, allocation so far we'll get basically one per year for like five years so um okay so you want me to reach you want me to reach out to ahm and see whether they have a program that that would work for yes okay um 11 for the 824 referral to p and z committee so that's the meeting uh, the public meeting this month or is Correct. So I put a letter in the packet, which is a memorandum I gave to the Planning and Zoning Commission on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, uh, because the Planning and Zoning Commission has to do what's called an 8-24 statutory referral before, the, before we put out a contract for the community center. What has to happen is the Planning and Zoning Commission has to decide whether it's consistent with the plan of conservation and development or not, and then report that back to the Board of Selectmen. So uh, I sent this to them on your behalf, um, since I know that you all want to uh, get a community center built. So they should be discussing that at the December meeting. Um, my guess is they'll approve it right on the spot, but I'm not positive. That's that's their commission's, uh, you know, responsibility. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's move to 11.5, uh, the 2023-2024 budget, proposed time schedule, major factors affecting the budget. So, Eric, you wanted to put this off. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to share my screen here for a sec. Okay, so I just wanted to go through before we get into the real nuts and bolts of budget season is just talk about kind of the big picture um, and what things are likely to be driving the budget. Um, obviously, this has been a tough year for a lot of people because of the inflation rate. Um, so these are the things I want to talk about briefly. One is personnel and administrative costs. Two is capital equipment, um, building and maintenance, bridges and culverts, roadways, energy costs. And then the last one is elections. Uh, so under personnel and administrative costs, uh, we do have a reasonable contract in place with MEIU. And we are starting negotiations with AFSME on a retired contract, uh, supposedly the first week in February. Um, per the healthcare consortium, the last number they gave us was to an anticipate an increase in the healthcare costs um, of up to 8%. As you may have uh, remembered, last year our healthcare costs actually decreased uh, two to three percent. Um, but they're anticipating it will go up about 8% this year. Um, the other thing is that we don't have, the state is, uh, has not even talked about what number the towns are going to have to come up with for MRF participation in the retirement program. But given that the stock market is pretty well down, I would anticipate we'll see an increase uh, in the town and individual contribution to MRF. But I really have no idea what that's likely to be. Um, and we're not gonna get that from the state till like June uh, at the earliest. Um, the second thing is changes in personnel. There's really a couple of things we have to be aware of. The tax collector has formally notified me that she will retire in the fall of 2023. 
So as a group, we need to start talking about the possibilities for replacement um, and whether we try to hire somebody that's a tax collector um, already, or do we hire somebody with the intention of sending them through the training to become a tax collector um, and how we want that transition to look like. So I think this spring, we're gonna have to tackle how we wanna go about that. Um, the chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission indicated to me again that he's gonna be advocating with the board uh, for a part-time uh, town planner. Um, so you're aware that you'll probably get that request. And then the question is, what do we do in terms of staffing for the community center once it's finished? That's something the board is gonna have to, to consider uh, how you wanna to address that. Um, next item up is capital equipment. So if you look at the capital equipment plan for public works, um, we've talked about purchasing a plow truck every five years. So we maintain three trucks that are 15 years or older and with the reserve truck that's less than uh, you know 20 years old. That's, that's been our goal. We've been working for, towards that over since around 2014. Um, so we bought one in 2014. We bought one in uh, basically the winter of 2019. And then we'll have the next one uh, the 23-24 uh, budget cycle if we get on the bandwagon fairly quickly. Um, so that, that would be the big ticket item that we would be looking at. Um, you know, I, the fire department has indicated that they're, they're probably gonna present the town with a proposal for purchase of a rescue engine uh, combo. Um, which would basically take two of the large public works, or not public works, large fire department vehicles out of service and replace it with a single combo unit. Um, but they're pretty expensive units. Um, you know, so I think the board has to anticipate that coming, whether the board of finance and board of selectmen agree with it or not, that's up to you. But I think you will kind of see that from the fire department. Um, I also think we should still consider a Bolt EUV for senior transportation, um, just because I think this is, you know, over the long term, it's a more economical way for us to be providing, you know, medical transport, um, which we do an awful lot of. Uh, so, and this would be roughly a $30,000 expenditure uh, if we considered it as a town. So building maintenance, you know, the community center, we are proceeding with the RFP review at this time. Um, the assumption is that we have the funds currently from the ARPA funds and potentially uh, some money from the multi-use building fund. Um, the construction of the senior transportation garage at 15 Center Street, that's largely grant funded. However, it is anticipating the use of about $75,000 from the multi-use building fund for the town's portion of that. Uh, the renovation of the old town hall, um, which will be done to satisfy the Connecticut, uh, the SHPO office. So we're able to tear down the other building. And then HVAC updates to the Andover Fire Department, and then also to the town hall. The fire department would be paid for out of the, uh, the basically the fire department capital fund. The HVAC updates to the town hall would be paid for with low SIP funds. Um, you know, those are both would, would, they would technically be in probably in this budget year, uh, but they're the next big, two big things coming up in terms of building maintenance. Um, next item up is bridges and culverts. So the replacement for Bunker Hill Bridge, you know, we've been very fortunate to secure complete funding for that. Uh, we currently have around $450,000 in the bank to help pay for that. 
um, we're not going to be able to release that money because we'll have to pay that money to the contractor uh, initially, but we will get fully reimbursed uh, for that bridge as well as the Long Hill Bridge. Um, the, the good news is we should have enough swing money in that fund right now that we don't need to add anything in future budget years. Um, and when both bridges are replaced, we should be able to roll that money back into the general fund, um, which is good. So we are proceeding with the design for the Hutchinson Road culvert replacement. And I'm hoping to meet with the engineer uh, next week to start the ball rolling again on that. Um, at this point, I'm anticipating we're gonna use the state local bridge design program for that which provides 50% funding. However, I've been hearing some rumors that I know some of the, the COGS and also the Council of Small Towns are pushing the state to use some of their federal, uh, you know, COVID relief and, and federal uh, IJA funds to backfill the culvert programs for the towns. So I want to get to the point that we can set ourselves up to take advantage of that if they do increase the, the percentage funding that the state will pay for for those programs. Um, if I can get the state to pay for all of that, that would be even better. But as it stands right now, we're looking at 50% funding for those. Um, we have enough money sitting in the bank to do the Hutchinson Road culvert replacement. Um, and then we kind of go from there and just keep keep doing them as we, we can fund that project. Uh, roadways, I think we're basically going to continue with our existing program of shimming and chip sealing roads. We should again be working in the northern half of the town and fully complete shimming and chip sealing all the roads in the northern half of town. We're kind of working our way around the, the town counterclockwise. Um, and then we're also working on a trip grant um, that will cover the cost of reclaiming and repaving uh, Skinner Hill Road um, and Hendy Road. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, a fairly long shot grant, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of towns applying for it, but I think we can make a pretty good argument for why that should be funded. Um, next up, energy costs. Uh, obviously, uh, diesel and oil have been incredibly expensive um, for a lot of people. We've been very fortunate that we've been locked in this year at around, I think, 229 a gallon for both diesel and heating oil. Um, if we locked in today, we would be locking in at around 318 a gallon for next year for heating oil as well as diesel. The price has been coming down a lot this fall. It seems like it's kind of bottomed out and it's going up a little bit, down a little bit, if you look at it on a day-to-day -day basis. So my guess is it's about bottomed out, um, but you know, I, I don't know. Obviously there's a lot of geopolitical factors that go into to price of that too. Uh, but if we locked in today, we would still be looking at about a 40% increase in costs for uh, both diesel and home heating oil compared to what we're paying now. Um, gasoline, um, we budgeted last year, we budgeted about $4 a gallon. And when we started off in June, we were averaging about $4.30 a gallon, but obviously it's come under $4. Um, and, you know, we're currently paying, you know, three fifty, three forty. dollars chair. And it still, it still seems to be coming down. Um, so uh, I would say next year, my guess would be we would budget about $3.50 a gallon. So we should actually be able to reduce our costs a little bit compared to currently. Um, electricity, you know, it's very hard to predict because the uh, utility companies basically, you know, they bid out in six months uh, intervals and they haven't, there's, there aren't any bids in for next year for electricity. So it's pretty tough to tell what our, you know, forecasts are electricity costs at this point. Um, so that covers utilities. 
And the last thing that's kind of a big unknown is the state adopted uh, a constitutional ability to hold early elections. In other words, to keep the polls open for some length of time before the actual day of elections. Um, but there's nothing right now about how that's going to be done or how it can be done. Um, where that comes, where that's a concern to the town is we have pretty old voting machines. And if we end up having to use the voting machines, um, you know, and keep elections open for multiple days, you know, or potentially even multiple weeks, our voting machines aren't capable of doing running tallies. Um, so we may actually be ending up looking at having to purchase new uh, election, you know, counting machines, um, depending on what the state state decides. Um, and, you know, I have no idea whether that's realistic or not. I, I just, I don't know where the state's going with that. Uh, so in terms of the kind of overview, that's what I have. Um, I'll send all this to you. I'll try to send this all to all the board of selectmen members tomorrow. Um, you know, that's just all food for thought as we're deciding where we go with next year's budget. Um, the good news is it's not nearly as bad as, you know, I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, we're now starting to look at locking in potentially heating oil, you know, in the low $3 a gallon, you know, whereas a couple months ago, we would have been locking in at, you know, something in the fives. So, so we're definitely better. Um, you know, that's all I got with that. Unless you have any questions or concerns about any of anything there. All right. Anybody have any questions? Paula? Scott? No. No. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Okay. We'll move on to item 12, approval of a meeting in minutes for Monday, November 14th, 2022. Somebody make a motion. I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for Monday, November, four, was it 14th? Yes. Yep. November 14th, 2022. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, item 13, the budget. Uh, Eric, do we have any appropriation transfers? We do not. Uh, any uh, over expenditure requests, item B? Okay. No, not at this point. Uh, item 14, the tax collector's report. It was in our package. It was a heavy tax collection month for October. So we don't have the November numbers ready. Is that accurate, Eric? As far as I know, that's accurate. Okay. All right. Um, so there are four refunds to be processed, all small dollars, probably totaling under $400. 3251 total. Yeah, looks about right. Uh, anybody want to make a motion on that one? Got, do you have it or you want me to do it? Go ahead. Okay. I make a motion to um, send up tax refunds totaling in $332.51. Do I have to make, do I have to say the names? No, you're fine. Scott, you got a second then? I'll second that, yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item 15, department reports. There were various departments that submitted their reports. Do we have any questions related to any of them? Eric, I have a question. How's the building department program going? I like the report that they're providing, but. Um, I think it's going very well. You know, overall contractors are all used to it. I mean, we do definitely, not me personally, but Lynn 
does have to do a little hand holding with some applicants that are putting in uh, you know, building permit applications because as a lot of people know, uh, a lot of contractors get the homeowners to pull the permits um, so they don't have to go through the hassle. So, uh, but overall, I think it's a huge improvement. Um, it makes it really easy to track what's happening, with, which is really nice. Um, and it makes it very easy to, to show, you know, what we've pulled and in what category, um, you know, and uh, to see both wetlands and zoning and the building department all on one sheet. So overall, I think it's great. Um, the other thing is because the assessor's office has access to it, um, it's very easy for the assessor to see what permits, um, you know, are pulled so we can go out and do inspections. You know, and we've actually found a fair bit of stuff lately um, when we went out to inspect for one thing uh, and found a whole bunch of other things that either didn't get permitted um, or uh, weren't inspected when they were done. So, so it's a good check. It provides a good check and balance that the assessor's office has that information directly. Have you heard anything, Eric, any complaints about um, if somebody calls and it rolls over to Bolton that some of the permits that are in Andover are not showing up in Bolton? I'd so we had an issue. So sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, so we had an issue that I think we've gotten corrected now. We had updated our phone tree, but we hadn't uh, we hadn't correctly updated the message. So if you were typing in the extension, um, the extension went correctly. But if you were just using the prompts, there was one prompt that was off. We had repeated one prompt twice. So there were things that were going to Randy Heckman's uh, cell phone, rolling to his cell phone that had been meant for the, uh, the zoning agent. And that was causing some issues. Um, I'm pretty sure we've gotten that straightened out now. Okay, what about specifically the permit, um, looking up a permit? So I had a contractor that called Town Hall, it went to Bolton and they said, they looked up the permit for the Andover resident and they said in Bolton it didn't exist, but then Andover had it in our, our system. Did you hear anything, any other? I don't know if it was just one situation, but did you hear anything like that? Uh, that I haven't heard about. I mean, you know, if the contractor wants to look up his permit, he should go on permit link and look up his permit and he'll see everything related to his permit. He shouldn't need to ask the building department to look up his permit. He well, has access to all that information. Yeah, so I guess I guess the email never came through saying the permit was approved, so. But you're saying even before it's approved, they can look and see if it's in the system and permit link? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, once you put a permit in, um, anybody can look on permit link and see that, but you as the individual, can log back into your account and you can read all the notes um, in the exact status of that permit. That's kind of the beauty of the system is that the that you know it enables uh, information to go directly to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as you put in the correct email address and it's sending the stuff to the right spot. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions related to any other reports that were in our pack? Okay. Item 16, correspondence. Any uh, correspondence that we need to deal with? <laughs> okay. No, nope, not that I know of. All right, we're gonna go on to item 17, public speak. We'll start with, uh, there's a phone number that's unmuted. Uh, seven four two five four seven five. Okay, we'll move on. Joanne Ebert. Hello, I just have a quick comment that I it's 
unrelated to what's been said tonight. I think someone said it before, but I'm very happy that Dollar General is in our town. I think the whole building site, it looks really nice, well kept inside and outside. It's the cleanest one I've ever seen. I've heard a million positive comments about it. I know from looking on forums and different things, people were really against it. Um, and and I, I know the ins and outs, but with going through the budget process tonight and everything, and then hearing, you know, already the increase that happened this particular year, plus, you know, going forward, it's nice to have commercial tax bases in town. And I think they, for what it is, they did a really nice job. It looks good on that corner. Um, it looks a lot better than a lot of other places on Route 6. So I'm just pleased that we have something that came to town, It, you know, from start to finish listening to it, and it looks nice. So um, that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Anne Creme. Okay. We'll move on. Grace G. Hi, I'm trying to um, turn on my camera here so you can see Dave and I. Oh, that's okay. Um, I guess it just won't work. Sorry. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for everything that you do for our town. And I know it's been a long evening. So Dave and I will keep this very, very short. Um, the reason we're here this evening is because we're asking for the board's support. We'd like to start an adult pickleball um, game or night or however you want to call it at Andover Elementary School. And I understand there's uh, disc golf on Monday nights, there's volleyball on Friday nights, and um, on Sunday night there's adult volleyball, uh, basketball. However, I know that that leaves three nights, um, and I understand that the kids do play basketball at this point in time. So we don't want to interfere with their time. However, I think that um, once basketball season is done, uh, we'd like to see if there's something we can do to get that started. We currently play in Hebron two to three nights a week. Uh, I started playing in Marlboro. So I know that in Columbia they have courts, in Colchester they do as well. So um, we're hoping that that's something that uh, the town of Andover can start as well. And after talking with a few people at the um, town hall, I am going to be going to their rec commission meeting next month to discuss some specifics about that. Thank you very much. That sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Good night. This is definitely the right place to be for that to get started. Um, I don't see anyone else on. Is there anyone else on that I'm missing? I don't think so. No. Nope. Okay. Item 18. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it, Scott, if you're not going to. Go ahead. I'll second it. All those in favor, aye. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Hope you're feeling better. Have a good Thanks. night.